Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Wednesday. Daylight savings goes out of effect. What am I trying to say? We go back. We to fall back. We fall back this, this weekend. weekend. Some people have trouble with that. No, that'll be nice because we're in the darkest part of the year right now. Mm -hmm. We'll get a little bit more sunshine in the morning, but it's hard for a lot of people. And right. later this hour, we're going to talk to our guest a little bit about some strategies that are actually backed by research on how to deal with seasonal affective disorder. I just hated being dark when you get home from work. Exactly. That's right. not great. Yeah. All right. That's coming up. But first, here's what's making news on this Wednesday. Some state lawmakers are pushing for the decriminalization of marijuana in small amounts. And we're hearing from neighbors after a shooting last night in Sun Prairie. And the impeachment inquiry moves along today with more depositions. We'll get an update from the U.S. Capitol. Let's take a look outside today. Weather is going to be the big story tonight. All is quiet in the right. pasture. That's a beautiful shot, but some accumulating snow and a cold and white Halloween is on the way. Let's head out to the weather patio. Round two begins are the weather I words. Think Mother Nature has some tricks up her sleeve. <laughs> It is starting up right now already, so I guess a little Halloween treat coming in early or trick, depending on which side you may be on. Here's a look at our high resolution Doppler. It gives us a better, a better look at what's actually falling on the ground rather than just what's in the sky. On the patio right now, we do have some light flurries falling. As you can see for areas west and south of Madison, where we're seeing some light snowfall come on through as well up towards the Dell, some lighter snow. Of course, we have several winter weather advisories in effect for tonight for Dane County, Lafayette and Green counties. It goes into effect from 10 until noon and then for Rock County that goes from 10 p.m. until 1 p.m. tomorrow as we're expecting a little snow to linger a little longer. Those snowfall totals are going to climb overnight and throughout the day for Halloween. So an alert day is in the forecast as the snow is definitely going Going to impact uh, your Halloween from trick or treating to your morning commute. It's going to be a bit of a messy day, but we'll take a closer look at what will follow Halloween in just a few minutes. Here's a look at the roads right now. No accidents to report. The eastbound side of the Beltline starting to get a little slower once you get closer to Park Street and John Nolan around Janesville. No delays. 39 and 90 should be smooth sailing. It'll take you 16 minutes to get from Sox City to Middleton and from Sun Prairie to downtown and 27 minutes to get from Janesville to the Beltline. I imagine some roads are going to start to really slow down as the snowfall starts to pick up in the next few hours. For the trick-or-treaters, the snow should be done by then. The snow will be done, yes, by trick-or-treating time. The snow will be done by then, but the question, of course, are the sidewalks going to be clean enough for the trick-or-treaters to get on through? Depends on how much we get, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll Dana, we'll see, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dana. First at four, there is a new push today to decriminalize small amounts of marijuana in Wisconsin. But as Rose Schmidt tells us, Republican leaders don't support the idea, Rose. So Mandela Barnes, the lieutenant governor and Democratic lawmakers unveiled a new bill today to decriminalize possession of less than 28 grams of pot. They say it will increase job opportunities and decrease racial disparities because in Wisconsin, people who are African-American are arrested for marijuana possession at least four times the rate of people who are white. But Republican legislative leaders opposed decriminalization and killed Governor Tony Evers' plan to do so earlier this year. Thanks to the inaction of Republican leadership here in Madison, we are now an island of antiquated drug policies in a sea of decriminalization. I don't know if it's right for us to make a policy decision statewide that using an illegal drug just simply becomes something now where it's not a serious crime. That's Speaker Robin Voss. He says marijuana possession is a federal crime and Wisconsin district attorneys can decide whether to issue charges in their respective counties. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald says in a statement that he's long opposed to decriminalization of marijuana and he doubts whether this latest bill will win support among Republicans. We'll continue to follow it. Thank you, Rose. The full House is gearing up for a possible Thursday vote on an impeachment resolution. Lawmakers also grilled State Department officials over the Trump administration's contacts with Ukraine. Ukraine. Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Ahead of a planned vote Thursday, lawmakers debated a resolution to set guidelines for the next phase of the impeachment inquiry. This is not a hearing on whether the president should be impeached. That will be determined at some other point. Uh, this is a hearing on trying to get a process in place. What you have set forth here is not an open and fair process. Meanwhile, two more State Department officials face congressional investigators. According to a prepared statement, Catherine Croft described an outside effort to remove then-ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. 
Christopher Anderson singled out the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, as an obstacle to cooperation between the White House and Ukraine. On this side of the Capitol, senators grilled Deputy Secretary of State John Sullivan over Giuliani's possible role in ousting Ambassador Yovanovitch. You were aware that there were individuals and forces outside of the State Department seeking to smear Ambassador Yovanovitch, is that correct? I was. And did you know Mr. Giuliani was one of those people? I believe uh, he was, yes. Tuesday, a member of the president's national security team, Alexander Vindman, testified that portions of the July 25th call between President Trump and Ukraine's leader were omitted from the White House's summary. On Twitter, the president shot back, there were many people listening to the call. How come they found nothing wrong with it? Witch hunt. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And House committees have sent deposition notices to three more officials, including former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Several House Democrats have indicated that the first public impeachment hearings could begin in a few weeks. A large wildfire in Southern California is threatening the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. The large brush fire started just before dawn and forced the evacuation of the complex and nearby homes. Michaela Ortega was one of the Good Samaritans who ran to help rescue horses after a stable caught fire. Went through that way and I, I'm not going to lie, I almost passed out. It's really, really, really ashy and dark. It was very hard to see. You kind of just had to listen to where they were. It's too smoky. To and we had successful stands up there on, uh, on protecting the library and the infrastructure around the facility. Grabbed goats and brought them to safety. Southern California is under an extreme red flag warning with hurricane force winds fanning the flames. Helicopters are bringing water to the area. The Reagan Library is the largest of the presidential libraries. It's also the burial place of the president and first lady Nancy Reagan. New at four declining sales is forcing Miller Beer's parent company to lay off 500 workers. The company is also changing its name from Miller Coors to Molson Coors. Company representatives say they're moving their North American headquarters to Chicago and closing their offices in Denver. They'll also move all support roles to Milwaukee. The company will also no longer be known as a brewing company to emphasize they make more than beer. Sales fell 3% in the first nine months of this year. One man is in stable condition after a shooting last night in Sun Prairie. Eric Franke is here now with details on how this unfolded and how neighbors are reacting. Eric? Susan and Mark, this happened just after 7 o'clock last night. Police took multiple calls reporting a shooting inside building number 200 of the Arlington apartment complex. This is at 650 Schiller Street, a cluster of apartment buildings there just south of Highway 151 and just west of North Bird Street. Police say a 26-year-old man was shot in the abdomen area and a male suspect took off before police arrived. Neighbors say they've gotten used to an area that police respond to frequently. Like I said, most of these, these uh, violent crimes in this area, some prairie, just, just happen to be really just general though, uh, what's going on to the person. You, you can't really, it's not really like based off of uh, random acts of violence. It's, it's, they're really just targets. Well, police have not released any description of a suspect. The victim said to be in stable condition at a local hospital. It remains an active investigation. If you have any information, police in Sun Prairie want to hear from you, you can call them anonymously at 837-6300. All right, Eric, thank you. You're welcome. An update from authorities in Rock County. An investigation continues a week after a Beloit teenager was shot to death. The medical examiner released the victim's name today. 19-year-old Enrique Ramirez was killed after he was shot near the intersection of Vine Street and North Street in Beloit. Beloit police say a suspect has been arrested in the case. Authorities have identified the motorcyclist killed in a crash Sunday afternoon on Highway 60 in Columbia County. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office says 29-year-old Christopher Hansen of Beaver Dam was pronounced dead at the scene. A tractor pulling a gravity box filled with corn collided with the motorcycle Hansen was riding. The operator of the tractor was not injured. Drugs and alcohol are not believed to be factors in the crash. An investigation is underway into, I'm sorry, go ahead, Susan. An investigation <laughs> is underway into what caused a house fire in the town of Rock. A bus driver dropping students off after school reported a house fire on Edgewater Drive yesterday afternoon. Firefighters from several departments responded. The garage was on fire with flames spreading to the house. The house and two vehicles were damaged. Damage is estimated at $275,000. No one was home at the time of the fire and no injuries were reported. 
Just get on a roll there. I can't stop. <laughs> That's okay. So there's more to come at four. We'll meet this month's top-notch teacher. He is a special ed teacher with some very special students. Charlotte Deleste will join us when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. Well, believe it or not, we're already talking about holiday shopping. A new report from the National Retail Federation found 40% of consumers like to start shopping before Halloween. The report found some people start shopping as early as September. Experts say people like to spread out their shopping to help ease the burden on their wallets. The NRF also found shoppers are spending more money on gifts as well. Holiday sales for 2019 are expected to increase by 4% totaling more than $700 billion. Well, millions of breast cancer survivors have had their lives saved as a result of early detection and treatment, but some of those therapies can harm other parts of the body, including the heart. Now an emerging field called cardio-oncology is growing to allow cardiologists and oncologists to work together to monitor women. Four months into her fight against stage 2 breast cancer, Andrea Centrani learned she had a new health challenge to conquer. After recovering from a mastectomy, Andrea received chemotherapy to attack her breast cancer, not knowing that it was attacking her heart as well. An echocardiogram revealed the 40-year-old was in heart failure. It was a little bit of a surprise, especially because I wasn't feeling anything. What we should not be telling our patients is don't get the very treatments that make you beat the cancer in the first place. 
Breast cancer treatment puts the heart at risk in several ways. Chemotherapy can damage the heart muscle that pumps blood, leading to heart failure. Radiation can disrupt normal heart rhythm and damage both the lining around the heart and the heart valves. The biggest risk from radiation is the development of early and accelerated coronary artery disease. While some women have no symptoms, others, others experience shortness of breath, chest pain, or decreased ability to exercise. Test scores are in for students nationwide, and parents and educators are not happy with the report card. Since 2017, the National Assessment of Education Statistics says scores have dropped for 8th graders in math and reading. During the past 10 years, many schools have used Common Core, a set of national educational standards sold as the silver bullet to student achievement. On the front lines of the classroom, Common Core increased student testing and teacher evaluation. Evaluations. Wednesday's report card also shows the gap has grown wider between the most and least competent students, but Mississippi is a bright spot. The state which had a large number of underperforming students is We've now number one for gains in fourth grade reading and math. We've doubled down on professional development for all of our pre-K through grade three teachers and administrators on how to teach the foundational skills of reading. Educators hope what's happening in Mississippi can be replaced, uh, can be replicated nationwide. The Federal Reserve cut interest rates for the third consecutive time today, but there's no promise of a fourth cut. Stocks were higher as a result of the cut. The Dow Industrials added 115 points, closing at 27,186. The Nasdaq was up 27. The S&P 500 gained nine. Well, not everyone is cut out to be a school teacher. Now throw in teaching and supporting students with special needs, and it truly takes someone extraordinary. Charlotte Deleste joins us with this month's Top Notch Teacher. Charlotte? Well, good afternoon to you both. Cross-categorical teachers, most commonly known as special ed teachers, have a challenging yet rewarding job. Photojournalist Kathy King and I found a teacher who is excelling at his, not just because of his education, but also his background. So you know you can make this shorter. Students at Orchard Ridge Elementary mostly have good days, but there are times when it can get a little challenging. You might be walking through a tunnel, it's dark, you, do, you just don't see the light, you just keep going and going and going. We feel like it's no hope, but then, bam, it's light. Light and hope. That's what Dominique Harvey is striving to provide as a teacher. I just think about the younger me. How I wish somebody would have talked to me growing up and someone actually like sit there and who I feel like really care about me. Mr. Dom, as he's called, grew up in Chicago. At first I wanted to be a social worker. But he later realized he could make a bigger impact being a teacher. Growing up I had a disability in reading, math, speech, and writing. So I kind of relate to the kids like when they get frustrated or feel insecure. Like, I feel like that's one reason I decided to come to special education, to be that push mm -hmm. and advocate. As a cross-categorical fifth grade teacher, he's making sure he's that positive reinforcement he wished he had. I'm stupid, I'm dumb. I'm like, why? Explain to me why. And he's like, because I can't do it. I'm like, I can't run. <laughs> Don't make me stupid. If you sit down and just listen to your kids, it helps a lot. After all, having hope is never a bad thing. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And you can see that light shine brightly in his students' eyes. Mr. Dom, congratulations on being a top-notch teacher and thank you for what you do every day. If you know of a top-notch teacher, please nominate him or her. Go to channel3000.com and under the news tab, click on education and it's there that you will find top-notch teachers. He seems like a special guy. Very much so. Mr. Dom. Mr. Dom, as they call him, mm -hmm, right no, down the street. Even when you work with a teacher who is, has some of the same challenges you have, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. It you is. It makes alone. a big difference, okay. and I think that really kind of breaks down a lot of barriers that, you know, it's like, oh, my teacher gets it. And yeah. I think that's there, then you get to push through. Special connection. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. There's more to come at 4, including the latest in your Halloween forecast. And coming up tonight at 5, high water is causing construction delays for a major bridge project in Janesville. Our Adam Duxter will have an update tonight at 5.
take a look at this. A speed flying pilot pushes his limits to the edge in Norway. Lenhar Eriksson claims to be the first person to ever fly this spe 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 specific line in Norway. There we go. As the mountain suddenly disappears beneath him, the twists and turns are getting a picturesque aerial view of this stunning waterfall. It's 2,400 feet tall. Eriksson is no novice. He's been speed flying for three years and has completed over 1,000 flights. What a view. That's so That's cool. That's incredible. I love the video, Beautiful. but I, I could never do it. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> we'll let him do it. Yeah. We'll watch. Share the video. Well, the snow is already starting to it fly. Is. It's flurrying out here on the weather patio. Yes, we're getting just a little bit like a like a light snow globe right now. Nothing too <laughs> crazy just yet. Uh, but it is, of course, going to pick up over the next few hours and stay overnight and stay into Thursday for Halloween. So more snow will be on the way soon. Why are we looking at our tower? The camera is, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>Round two begins now for us, even though outside it doesn't seem like it's coming down too heavily as you can see off on our radar uh, to the west and south of Madison. We are picking up just a little more a little wintery mix below the state line, but in Madison we do have some light flurries coming down and it's just going to continue to ramp up over the next few hours overnight and for Halloween. So from here on out, just get ready for a little more snow. Actually, as we look ahead through the rest of the evening, we start to climb and our probability for seeing snowfall. The good Good news, most of the heavier snowfall is going to come in overnight and early, early on Thursday. So we get it in when folks are not on the roads or trying to be out and about. And then the chances for that snow continue to de decrease throughout the day. Though we will still have snow falling for much of the area for Thursday morning. It does fall later on Thursday evening uh, and heading into Friday. We aren't looking at any snow chances for early on. Of course, this time period, crucial for trick-or-treaters. We would like for everything to stop falling a little early. That way we can get porches and 
and sidewalks and everything cleaned up for anyone who's heading on out uh, for Thursday night. Again, Friday morning looks fine, but we'll get to Friday afternoon in just a second. Overnight, the snowfall just continues to lift on northeast. Right along the lake, we might see a little bit of rain well to the east, but it just doesn't seem likely that we'll see any of that wintry mix crossing into parts of Dane Rock or Greene County. The snowfall continues into Thursday morning under a mostly cloudy sky. Temperatures fall well below freezing. Overnight lows in the mid to upper 20s for most of the area, so a very cold start to the day. For your morning commute from Madison, Janesville, Monroe, uh, we're looking at the snow still coming down for some areas, but it'll start to back off. It won't be quite as heavy for your drive into work. In the afternoon, maybe a few isolated spots, but then we really taper on off for the evening. Still mostly cloudy, still very chilly outside, uh, but once we get the snow to stop falling, of course, we can clean it on up. Thursday night becoming partly cloudy for Friday morning, a very cold start to the day, and then later in the afternoon, it does seem likely that we'll have another chance for some light snow showers or flurries or even a little wintry mix for some areas where temperatures will climb closer to 40. Those accumulation totals, it's going to be a very thin line between areas that barely get anything or under an inch and areas that could see up to four inches of snow accumulation. Those totals, as you can see, increase towards the southeast corner, so plan on, of course, the southeast corner of Dane, Dane County County picking up just a little more than areas towards Mazo and Sauk City. Janesville still looking right around that four inches of accumulation range, so it is going to be measurable snowfall. A little bit of accumulation for Halloween, so an alert day still in the forecast for tonight and for tomorrow. It is going to be wet and cold outside for trick-or-treaters, even as that snow does wrap on up. Looking at October, sometimes it can be a pretty good indicator at what we are expecting for the season ahead. Now, We'll see how this plays on out for us. But looking back at our five snowiest Octobers, three of them ended up being an above average for the season. Of course, with the snow coming tonight to wrap up the month of October, our total will jump well over three inches for the month. And we still got a few more months to see what comes through for the season. Temperatures for tomorrow afternoon will be falling through the low 30s for trick or treating. That means it is going to be very cold outside. Please plan ahead with the costumes layer on up, bundle up if you can. And maybe a waterproof jacket would be a, a good option. Overnight lows in the mid to upper 20s tomorrow. Uh, high temperatures will be in the mid 30s. The snowfall will be ending late in the day and those accumulation totals of course, will be capping off in the early afternoon. Alert day for Thursday for our Halloween. For Friday, we're in the upper 30s for afternoon highs, still well below average. Saturday and Sunday bring partly sunny skies, and for Saturday, we get another hour of sleep, which will be nice. A chance for some snow showers develop Sunday night into Monday, and then Monday we do have that chance for some wintry mix to come on through as temperatures will be a little higher, so some rain more likely along with that snowfall. But right now, it's, it's, it's supposed to be 50, isn't it? Snow. Yes, it is supposed to be 50 degrees outside. Oh, and it's such bad timing for Halloween. For Halloween, but it's not ideal. Especially um, south of us, like Janesville, Beloit, yeah. look like they're going to have significant totals. Really, and much of Rock County, again, in that southeast area, that's where we're going to see the totals be just a little bit higher. Uh, as it starts coming in, it's really not going to stop heading overnight into tomorrow morning. All right, a lot extra time in the morning. Absolutely, for okay. the commute. All right, Dana, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Dana. A 14-year-old from California is America's new top young scientist. The eighth grader created a nanoparticle liquid bandage to replace antibiotics. Incredible. I, I mean, don't even really know what is. it is. The future is bright. She beat nine other finalists and hundreds of students who submitted ideas. The 3M Young Scientist Challenge is held every year in St. Paul, Minnesota. The national competition encourages middle schoolers to come up with projects to tackle global problems. Nikki Batiste got a behind the scenes look at the competition and a special tour of the 3M Labs. America's 2019 top young scientist is Cara Fan. Cara Fan was named America's top young scientist for 2019, snagging a $25,000 prize. I feel really shocked and surprised, but really excited at the same time. This is the nail silver I made. Judges were impressed by her nanoparticle liquid bandage. My project is important because it reduces the overuse of antibiotics. After two days of mind-twisting challenges and working one-on-one -on -one with world-renowned scientists more than twice their age okay, in a I sort of spelling me for science, <laughs> these 10 finalists beat hundreds of their 5th to 8th grade peers for the chance to present their final projects in front of 3M and Discovery executives. 
I would have a solar panel. And Caroline Crouchley got better. second place. And she I created a sustainable say, train uh, that she says is safer and more efficient than Elon yeah. Musk's Hyperloop. Four million children develop asthma every year due to air pollution from cars and trucks, and there are 11,000 new cases every day. So I want to prevent all of this from happening. First, you input a gesture. Faraz Tamboli created a device that translates sign language into voice and voice into sign language. When my dad was around my age, there was this kid, and he always wanted to play with my dad. But since he was a phonic, he couldn't uh, talk to my dad and tell him that he just wanted to play with him. So my dad got scared and ran away. His competition video illustrates his idea. I thought, why can't I translate their only way of communication, sign language, and started thinking of how to recognize the hand and its gestures and figure out the movement of the hand. Before their final presentations, the young scientists toured 3M's Innovation Center to see some adult projects like this echo-free chamber. Yeah. What these young minds have learned may be a lesson not just in science, but in life. My takeaway from this project is that if you work well with other people, then great things happen. Past winners have met the president, been featured in Forbes 30 Under 30, spoken before Congress, and given TED Talks. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, New York. These kids are in middle school. What were you doing in the seventh grade? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> UW-Madison, I hope you're watching. Trying to tie my shoes. <laughs> yeah, right, boys. Future, future's in good hands. Incredible. Yep. Well, are you looking for a last-minute Halloween costume idea for the kids? When we come back, we'll find out what all the cool kids are wearing this year. That's when Live at Four continues. We'll be right back.
Here's a live look from our sister station in La Crosse, where it is not snowing. It's gray as well there. Yeah. Halloween, 24 hours away now. Yeah. It's almost here. Joy Benedict looks at what the kids will be wearing this year. Hunting for last minute Halloween goods can be downright scary. But mom, Suzanne Whitaker, says she has a good excuse. We are just last minute shopping because no one makes a decision. <laughs> they change their, their mind every single day what they want to be. The National Retail Federation says Americans will spend an average of $86 each on everything from costumes to candy. Abigail Ambrosia is spending much more. Between candy and costumes for a family of five, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars probably. Her daughter is going to be Mal from Disney's Descendants, but this year, princess costumes and superheroes are kids' top choices. It's like Spider-Man going to Batman, Superman, and like Ninja Turtles. Those are always a hot seller. Ben Abomaluki works at Glendale Halloween, where they devote a full wall to superheroes. He says kids and many adults are also buying something much more frightening, thanks to a recent Stephen King movie. Mostly it is like clowns, scary costumes, stuff like that. Costumes aren't just for people, though. Stores also have many options for pets. 29 million Americans are dressing up their pets this year. And yes, superheroes are also very popular among our four-legged friends. As for Whitaker, her four-year-old has decided to be a fairy. And her one-year-old? And this one we're still working on. We would thought maybe Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Political costumes, another one of many Halloween purchases people are making, with spending expected to hit nearly $9 billion this year. Joy Benedict, CBS News, Glendale, California. That little guy would make a good Bernie he Sanders. A like Bernie. <laughs> We're going to have our trick or treat on Live at Four mm -hmm. tomorrow. You might have to bring it inside. Yeah, it's going to be a little chilly out. It's going to be chilly and windy and a little snowy for trick or treating tomorrow. But if you're going out, here's a few of the scheduled trick or treat times. Madison doesn't have an official time for kids, but city officials recommend going out between 4 and 8 p.m. It runs from 5 30 to 7 30 in Janesville in Sun Prairie. It's 5 to 7. For a full list of times, you can head to our website, channel 3000. Dot com. And still to come at four, we switch back to standard time this weekend. Set your clocks back an hour. That means we're entering the darkest time of the year. We like to call her our happiness professor. Dr. Christine Whelan has some advice on how to cope with the time change. That's there, what, she there she is. That's when Live at Four continues.
It's getting a little busy on the roads right now. Looking at the Beltline east and westbound, at least moving though. You can see at the very edge of this shot right at Park Street, the eastbound side starting to get a little more congested, so things are slowing down. No accidents to report. The eastbound side uh, stretching all the way from 151 past John Nolan now. A little delayed. Park Street getting on to 12 westbound, slowing down just a little bit, but once you get through the on ramp, you should be fine. The Isthmus looks okay. If you're heading downtown around Janesville, no delays right now either. Now from Janesville to the Beltline, it will take you 26 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Sauk City to Middleton and from Sun Prairie to downtown. About a 17 minute drive this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right. Thank you, Dana. The Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular oh, is up wow. and running at the Minnesota Zoo in Apple Valley. The event now in its second year features over 5,000 carved and illuminated pumpkins. There's still time to see it if you're heading to the Twin Cities. The event runs through Friday. Oh, road trip. Look at that. Yeah, I would love to see that. Well, for many, fall is the best time of year, but for others, it brings apprehension for the coming winter months. Seasonal affective disorder is a serious problem. It affects 10 to 20 million Americans. But there are strategies, and a lot of them are backed by research, to get us all through this darkest time of the year. <laughs> Dr. Christine Whelan is a clinical professor in the School of Human Ecology at UW-Madison. We like to call her our happiness guru. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Good to see you. Good to Welcome see back. you, too. Thanks. So this really is a serious issue. It affects a lot of people and it and it really changes people's behavior at this yeah, time of the year. It does. And in fact, one in 10 Americans suffer from some sort of, of seasonal mood shift, right? So it's darker out more often, right? We don't, it would be wonderful to wake up every morning to the birds chirping and sun coming in your window, right? But it's going to get cold. We're not going to want to go outside as much. Uh, the, the sun just isn't shining as much these yeah, days. Yeah, the sun doesn't come up to what, 7.30 now? Something like that. That's right. And, and so, you know, the idea of, of some behavior change strategies to not only just get you up and go, but to get outside. These are the things that research is finding is the way to boost your mood in the winter months. So the darkness produces a chemical change. It does. So when, um, so when it's dark outside, we, our bodies make more melatonin, and that makes us sleepier. Right? Oh. But it also can make us more depressed. Um, and so, you know, even on a gray day, there's a whole lot more sunlight out there than there is inside. So actually getting out, going on a walk. I just went on a walk this afternoon. It was gray and cold, but that's a mood enhancer. It lifts your mood to get out there and get moving. And you can sort of program your lights. We were talking you about can. this to just come on without you having to do anything. You so need the light. You do. You need the light. And um, and so research shows that rather than trying to overcome a, um, a bad behavior and, and try to get yourself not to do something, it's better to set your environment up so that you can succeed. So, for example, setting up an automated light so that the, all the lights go on at a particular time of the morning and, uh, and, and get you up and going. There are plenty of people who use those seasonal affective disorder lamps, the full broad spectrum lamps. Um, if you sit in front of that in the morning uh, for about 20 minutes, while you're getting your morning coffee, that can also be a mood enhancer. Um, you know, all of these these ways of, of tricking your body to say, hey, you know, it's time to get up and go. <laughs> have alarms go off, buzzers. Uh, you know, th that is true. Now, I, I do want to say, though, that a lot of people love the darker winter months as well, right? And so it's not about just trying to avoid it, but sometimes embracing it, curling up by a warm fire, um, you know, in enjoying that, that time inside where it's cozy, setting up lots of of twinkle lights around you um, to really enhance that feeling so you can have light in the darkness. You don't have to worry about cutting the lawn or working in the yard. Well, except for snow shoveling, but you're going to come <laughs> over to my house to do that, right? <laughs> I live in a condo. I don't have to do it. <laughs> no, but it's true. You just restructure your thinking a little bit. I you always do. put Halloween lights up outside of my house for that very reason, yeah. so that when I come home at night, it's all lit up. It's all lit and up. And it makes, it just, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just makes me feel happier. It does, and 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 setting up those lights, um, again, so they go on automatically, uh, can be a way of welcoming yourself home. Um, and uh, and so light in the darkness, and then also embracing the darkness as a period of, of sort of hibernation for us as well, mm -hmm. right? Curl up with a good book. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're a modern civilization, but all this goes back to you primal times. It absolutely does. I mean, you know, so before there was electricity, of course, our lives were were totally, uh, you know, mandated by whether there was sun or whether there was not, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, and people acted differently on the full moon than they did um, on a totally dark night. So, uh, so yes, 
we we have circadian rhythms. We go we, we go with these uh, with this with the, with the seasons, and um, and that's okay. But for those of us who have to keep on keeping on, um, <laughs> staying staying activated and uh, and getting out as much as possible, and hoping for that snowfall maybe so that the sun can glint off the snow. <laughs> Is there anything more beautiful and bright than I that? I agree. I agree. Well, you're half full, I'll tell you. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm all about happiness, right? I mean, that, that's why you guys like me, right? I, I'm, I'm the dose exactly. of the happiness, happiness guru. Well, yes. And, and there's nothing you can do about it, so embrace it. Well, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, enjoy it, and um, and tis the season, that's almost. Right. Yeah, right, no. Extra hour sleep. And, uh, yes. There you go. Yeah. Getting there you go. All sorts of positives. Back. Fall back. I love it. Well Here done, we go. Mark. <laughs> Here we go. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Christine. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Final check your forecast coming up. Have you role play back? And the snow is starting to fall. It is. It's right now very, very, very light. Here's actually a live look from the patio. Uh, as you can see, the snow that's already out there, of course, from earlier this week. That's really light. Really light. <laughs> if you squint at the black cats, you can see the light flurries. I want to bounce actually over to those weather graphics now with our high resolution Doppler. Oh, now you can that's see it. That's exactly. It gives you a bit of a better look at what's actually falling. Even around Madison right now, it is just very, very light. I'll even zoom in so you can see uh, not even picking anything up downtown, but looking towards Prairie du Sac, Lone Rock, Mount Hora, Black Earth, you're likely seeing some snowflakes falling down around Janesville. Still pretty dry, but near Broadhead, we do have a little wintry mix just outside of Monroe. Some light snowfall as well. Janesville and Beloit, your turn is coming. Just hold on again. The snow showers, once they pick on up, they will be staying with us overnight. So because of this, we have a winter weather advisory in effect uh, for parts of the area. Dane County, Lafayette and Green counties from 10 o'clock until noon tomorrow. It goes until 3 o'clock on Thursday for Green County as they'll be seeing snowfall lasting a little later into the day. And once it starts up, it stays into the morning because of that. We do have an alert day in the forecast for tonight and for Thursday. A wet and cold Halloween on the way. Those snowfall totals see there a very tight cutoff from where we likely see just trace amounts in parts of Sauk County and Iowa counties. But for much of Dane County, we will be picking up just a few inches, a little more accumulation. Temperatures for trick or treating will be falling into the upper 20s. Mm. That's yes, good. a little layered up uh, would be a good idea, though the snowfall 
will be stocking in time for trick-or-treating. That is the good news, but it's going to be very cold outside. And even with the precipitation stopping, it's still going to be quite wet and messy. So snow boots good. Uh, making sure you have the thick socks, of mm -hmm. course, with the little ones. I know my snow boots back in the day used to leak a lot. So I'm going to go to the socks. Michelin Tire Man. Yeah. <laughs> big, You're right. Big puffy. That's a good <laughs> idea. Warm. And if we could have one of those waddle in during the, the trick-or-treating event tomorrow, that would be great, too. So oh, yes, a warm so. costume so would very, be good. Very similar to the snowfall from the other day. It really is that heavy snow coming through because yeah. right now those temperatures are in the mid 30s. So having that heavier snowfall early on and then once it finally wraps on up, we'll, we'll see accumulation totals in a similar spot. And right. Josh, Leah and Hattie will be watching it for you tomorrow morning. Yeah, absolutely. It might be a little tricky with the commute tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow here on Live at Four, we'll find out what's happening in the 608 this weekend. And it's Halloween. Our trick or treaters will be invading our studio for our annual trick or treat event. We'll check out the costumes. Dana's even bringing Penny. <laughs> That's coming up tomorrow on Live at 4. In today's final touch, putting a little bling into your Halloween costume. We are talking designer fashion skulls and spider brooches. Glistening in the window at one of London's top jewelry stores is a large diamond skull sitting in the middle of two hand brooches nearby. A spooky spider brooch, a tiara made up of tiny skulls, and a sparkly clutch bag decorated as a spider in its web. The butler and